Good evening and welcome to Newsbreak Live. I'm Hiba Samma. Thanks so much for joining us. A community meeting to discuss a large project will take place in two days. Torrance residents are invited to attend a neighborhood workshop put on by the Public Works Department for the North Torrance Walt Field Project. City staff will provide more details about the project and answer questions. There are two scheduled and the first takes place this Thursday from 7 p.m. at McMaster Community Center. The project's phase three utilizes the design build method methodology for design and construction of new water infrastructure for the city of Torrance. Some of the major parts of the pro project include include construction and equipping two new wells and a 2.5 million gallon storage reservoir, chemical treatment and storage facilities and booster pump station. And with reduced water supplies from the Sacramento Delta and the Colorado River, it's causing the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California to reduce water allocations and causing imported water to become much more expensive. Officials say local water supplies for the city will reduce the impacts of future water reductions and rate increases increases. City staff, a consultant and a design build contractor will be present. If you missed this one, there will be another one on October 10th. In the wake of recent mass shootings, county officials are expanding a school violence prevention program to keep students safer as they head back to school. Torrance High School hosted a press conference with Board of Supervisors Janice Hahn and Catherine Barger this week. They announced the expansion of the School Threat Assessment Response Team program that is already working to intervene with threats at schools. There is a response team that is made up of mental health professionals who partner with local law enforcement to respond to calls about threats against schools across the country before it becomes a reality. They now have expanded their start team from 15 to 42 members. The purpose of the program program is to provide teachers, school administrators, parents and students with a direct and immediate response to threats or concerning behavior within the school environment. During the conference, Han talked about it and how it already has been effective at school campuses, including Torrance High School. Torrance High has already received the START training and has been a model in sending referrals to the START team. Mayor Patrick Fury and Torrance Unified School Board members were present. Board President Don Lee thanked the supervisors for increasing access to the mental intervention that helps students be more successful. First phone call when we have a student in crisis and a student of need. This um, start has serves as a strong liaison for us between the school, our law enforcement, mental health, and the family, acting as a dynamic piece of that puzzle, um, tying us together to support that whole child. START provides highly specialized clinical expertise um, that we wouldn't otherwise easily have accessible um, to our school or school district, and we thank them for that. The program started in 2009 under the L.A. County Department of Mental Health. The expansion will allow more direct support to school and hold additional training with teachers and local law enforcement on referrals to the START program. It will also teach them characteristics and warning signs of a potential threat. Since inception, the program has received more than 12,000 referrals. A new eatery on the boulevard was bustling with business on grand opening day. Urban Plate celebrated the opening of its 17th location at Delamo Crossing. The fast casual restaurant concept prides itself in meals made from scratch at an affordable price. Officials say they carefully prepare all of the menu items on site every day. They use local produce, grass-fed beef, cage-free chicken, and sustainably sourced seafood. They have customizable plates, hand-tossed entree salads, chef-crafted sandwiches, slow-cooked braises, and in-house made desserts to name a few. You can also find a variety of type of bev beverages. They also have menu items that are vegan, vegetarian, dairy-free, and much more. The general manager, James Kong, is a 20-year Torrance resident and is excited to bring the unique restaurant to the neighborhood. The Torrance location also introduces a new cooking concept for the brand, a seafood grill where they will grill to order. With each restaurant opening, Urban Plates gives back. During three days of pre-opening events, Urban Plates donated back to the Volunteer Center South Bay Harbor, Long Beach. Make sure to tune into This Week in Torrance, where Torrance City Cable reporter Colleen Farrell shares details from VIP Night.
An in-shop bakery is opening another location in Torrance. 85 Degrees C Bakery Cafe is opening its doors at the Glamo Fashion Center on the main level between Macy's Women's and Nordstrom tomorrow. The store sells more than 50 varieties of pastries baked fresh hourly. They also sell a wide range of unique coffee tea drinks and gourmet cakes. Founded in 2003, 85 Degrees C has more than 1,000 locations worldwide. The cafe is known for its famous signature ice sea salt coffee. Burger M is the next place to open soon at the Donald Fashion Center. Now there are just few days left of the, sum, of the city's summer parks program. Today families came out to McMaster Park to enjoy the city's free park program but uh, put on since June through the end of August. Parents can join in on the fun with their children. It takes place at 13 of the city's parks between noon to 4 p.m. Recreation staff lead and supervise daily activities such as crafts or games. Every week there is a theme with this week being Western. The city also hosts a carpenter wagon event throughout the summer where Home Depot will provide wood crafts to help children build mailboxes, toolboxes, birdhouses and much more. So basically, we hope that the children have fun. They get out of the house, they learn how to socialize with others. Um, rather than just being home, spending hours on the TV, they're out here, um, they're playing caroms, they play board games, they make crafts, they make little fuse beats. The program is hosted annually. Hundreds of Marvel fans lined up at the Best Buy in Torrance today as part of the Marvel's We Love You 3000 tour celebrating the home video of Avengers Endgame. The Torrance Best Buy is one of many that are participating in the launch events. Actor Sean Gunn was at the Pacific Coast Highway location to sign Blu-rays and distribute special gifts such as tour pins, customized prints, and MCU Funko Pop figures. Fans also could buy Best Buy's exclusive Avengers Endgame 4K Ultra and HD Blu-ray Steelbook Edition. The tour kicked off at San Diego Comic-Con in July. For more information on this tour, go to marvel.com slash we love you 3000. The Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce is taking steps to make sure the community is equipped with the skills to save lives. This Thursday, the Chamber, in partnership with the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health, is putting on a hands-only CPR training from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. It's free for Chamber members. There will be public health giveaways and literature will be available. The class will teach participants the skills needed to perform life-saving measures without the use of mouth-to-mouth -mouth recitation. The American Heart Association says 70% of all out-of-hospital cardiac arrests happen at home. It's most likely that you may perform CPR on someone you know. You can RSVP by going to torrencechamber.com CPR. For two decades, the Torrance Theatre Company has been committed to providing affordable, professional quality theatre productions to Torrance and South Bay communities. This month, the company celebrates its 20th anniversary with its biggest show ever, Disney's hit musical Beauty and the Beast. Reporter Colleen Farrell takes us behind the scenes. No passion could reach me. From the first rehearsal, director Jim Hormel recognized something special was happening. She really is a funny girl. It's like the old MGM musicals that you used to hear where there's this glorious voices coming from the heavens. To celebrate its 20th anniversary, the Torrance Theatre Company decided to take on something new its first ever family musical, Disney's Beauty and the Beast. He was doomed to be a beast for all time. It's a tale about an arrogant prince cursed to live as a terrifying beast until he finds true love. His chance comes through the beautiful Belle, who sees the sensitive soul behind the fearsome facade. I just finished the most wonderful story about a beast. Hopefully she'll inspire people to see what's underneath. When you look at the beast, he it's easy to just see him as a tough guy and uh, scary, but uh, I hope that the audience does see some of that vulnerability in the performance that I give. Before production began, Hormel had his sights set on actor-singer Chris Tiernan to bring the beast to life. He brings an amazing vocal instrument, which I could listen to him sing all day, but he also brings acting skill and you don't always get both. 
With a cast of 45, this is the largest ever production for the Torrance Theatre Company, which presented some unique challenges and opportunities. Because we don't just have 45 people, we have 45 incredibly talented people and incredibly talented singers. Every night in rehearsal, I just sit back when the songs start and I just kind of bask in the beauty of it. And our choreographer is amazing. Nico really moves them around and keeps it looking not stagnant, not static. The show will be a feast for the senses. It will feature a live orchestra, more than 120 costumes, and 50 wigs. Despite the large cast, Formel is taking special care not to take any creative license with the Broadway hit. We aren't really messing with perfection. Artistic director Gia Jordal hopes the production's broad appeal and talent will entice theater goers to come and experience an example of community theater at its finest. The kind of people that we have brought in, super talented, super dedicated, and just ready to do whatever it takes to make it happen. For Jardal, the cast and crew, it's that symbiotic relationship that creates a win-win for everyone. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Colleen Farrell. Thanks, Colleen. You can catch Disney's Beauty and the Beast from this Friday through August 25th at the James Armstrong Theater. For tickets, visit TorrenceTheaterCompany.com or you can give them a call at 310-781-7171. Now let's get to the weather. The heat wave will continue throughout the week. Today there was a high of 75 degrees with an expected low of 63 here in Torrance. Throughout the week you will expect similar temperatures. And with Southern California warming up this week, officials are urging people to stay cool. Drink plenty of water, limit outdoor activities, wear light-colored clothing, know the symptoms of heat exhaustion that, include, that induces weakness, headaches, nausea, or vomiting. Also, with power outages more prevalent during the heat, conserve energy. Turn off unnecessary lights, turn thermostats to 78 degrees or higher, and try to conserve energy as much as you can between 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. The Katie Geiser Civic Center Live library and Bartlett Senior Center are places you can stop by to cool down. Also, make sure your pets are well taken care of. Give them water. Don't leave them in cars and keep them at home if possible. Consider taking your four-legged friends on walks later in the day when it's cool. Torrance City Council is back on the dais tonight. Don't forget to tune in right here at 7 p.m. The city will honor the 20th anniversary of Torrance Theatre Company and the Citizen Development and Enrichment Committee will address safety concerns made by the Seaside Rancho's residents regarding the holiday lights display. Now let's get to the events. This Thursday you can stop by the Walteria Library at 4 p.m. Artie will bring his brand of magic, juggling, puppetry, storytelling, and balloon twisting to attendees. The free program is sponsored by the Friends of the Torrance Library. No registration is required. Then the Community Services Department Recreation Services Division is putting on its youth synchronized swim show this Friday at Sar and Saturday at 8.15. It will take place at the Victor E. Benstead Plunge. Tickets for adults are $8 and for children under 17 and seniors, it's $5. Then Fabletics at the Delamo Fashion Center this Sunday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. is hosting a free workout class by Autumn Bruner. The PO class combines the muscle sculpting of Pilates and yoga. Register at eventbrite.com. Well, in just two minutes, Melissa Lobel, manager and naturalist from the Majorna Marsh Preserve and Nature Center, will join us to talk about some exciting events happening at the marsh. We'll be back in just a few. Queen is just my everything. Right now, I wouldn't know where my life would be without her. They say chivalry's dead, it's not. Terrence is a gentleman, he opens doors. His smile did it. His smile, his eyes, his knowledge. My landlord, he decided that he wanted me to move based on the fact that I was transgender. It takes me to a place of no hope. It takes me to a place of loneliness. It just, it saddens me. When you discriminate against somebody in housing, where do these people go? Let's just respect people in everyday life for just being human. Two, three, four. 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And last one. Breathe in. Breathe out. Kiara, Valeria, you're in charge of setting up the database. Tali, you'll take network layering. And Isabel, you'll build out the front end. Let's do this. Meet Sammy. Sammy developed an app that helps chronically ill kids feel less alone. Meet Eleanor. In 30 years, she'll be designing the next trip to Mars. And Alexis. She started a digital magazine aimed at instilling confidence in young women. When we create opportunities for girls to stretch their minds, we give them the confidence to change the world. She can STEM, so can you. Learn more at She Can STEM. Welcome back to the second half of Newsbreak Live. Joining me is Melissa Lobel, the manager and naturalist from the Majona Marsh Preserve and Nature Center right here in Torrance. Welcome. Hi, Hiba. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And tonight's exciting because we're talking about, I like to say, the hidden gem right here in <laughs> Torrance, the Madrona Marsh. And this Saturday, the Friends of Madrona Marsh are hosting a fundraiser at the preserve. So tell me about it. So the Friends of Madrona Marsh are the 501c3. Um, they're really the backbone to our success. The city of Torrance works work closely with the Friends of Madrona Marsh to be able to fulfill our mission. And that is preservation, education, and aesthetics. And so this fundraiser is really important. They are able to um, do a fundraiser every year. This year, the topic's going to be Walk Through Time, which is inspired by Tracy Drake. It was a new exhibit and um, part of her passion before she left Madrona. She's now Parks Managers. And uh, really, it's gonna, it talks about the history of Madrona, walking through the time from the dinosaur ages all the way to Spanish and Tongva all the way to today. And then there's a couple other new exhibits that you can explore the different type of habitats. And, and she's going to mention all of that. She's going to give a live presentation. Um, the fundraiser is this Saturday, August 17th from 6 to 10 p.m. It's $50 a ticket. Uh, that includes your food and drinks. There'll be lots of auction baskets and items. We encourage you guys to come down to Madrona Marsh Nature Center, buy a ticket. Um, you can also go on to PayPal through Friends of Madrona Marsh website. Uh, supporting a great cause and we hope that you guys can uh, attend the fundraiser. We'd love to have everyone there. And as you just mentioned, Tracy Drake, the former manager at the Madrona Marsh Preserve, will be a keynote speaker. And tell me a little bit more about um, what the fundraiser will support. Sure. So as I mentioned, they're really our backbone, but a lot of the funding helps with restoration of plants and animals and making sure that the preserve continues to thrive, not only for plants and animals, but also people. So we're able to restore areas that might um, need a little bit of extra help so we can increase our biodiversity. And that's really important for us to be able to do. And uh, as you know, Madrona Marsh is a really special place in the city of Torrance. In fact, we're one of the top 100 birding spots in the country. Oh, wow. So that really shows how important this restoration, the restoration projects are. And we're incredibly grateful for the Friends of Madrona Marsh to be able to help make the, this possible. So tickets are $50, and I do want to mention it's only for adults, and that will include drink and food. Yes, correct. And there'll also be live music. You'll be able to tour the Native Garden and all throughout the center. You mentioned earlier, I'm going to switch gears a little bit, about the interactive exhibit. So the great thing is people come out to the fundraiser. They will also be able to explore the marsh that evening and check out the new exhibit. So tell me, this was a long time coming. It's finally open to the public, and it really shares the true history of what the marsh is. Yeah, it really does. And there's the intera interactive exhibits that you mentioned. That's a really great chance for people to, people to uh, hands-on learning, to be able to learn about the different habitats. We have coastal prairie, we have vernal marsh, we have the vernal pool, and we have the willow scrublands. If you enter into our atrium, you'll learn about each of those habitats. And within those little sections, you get to feel, touch, and use all your senses to explore the mammals, the birds, the insects, all the animals that thrive there. And it's really incredible because we want them to be aware before they go on the preserve, what are the things they might see? Why are they important? How, how can they help protect them in, in their natural habitat? We're going to talk a little bit more about what the marsh is, but the marsh is a vernal pool, essentially, right? Yeah, well, we have a vernal pools, and we also have the vernal marsh. The vernal pool is basically an indentation, a natural um, indentation in the land. It has a clay-like layer that can hold natural rainwater. It's a very sensitive habitat. In fact, we're one of the only remaining vernal pools in Los Angeles County left. 
really sensitive habitat, so it's important that we preserve it. It's uh, millions of resting invertebrates, and when the water's just right and the temperature's just right, all of those resting invertebrates will hatch, come alive, and create an ecosystem and uh, allow birds and insects to be able to have food to eat. We manage those very closely. And then there's the vernal marsh, and this is all filled through fresh water. And the vernal marsh is about 60% of the entire 45 acres when it's entirely full. Wow. Last year we had 3.6 6 inches of rain. This year we had 17 inches of rain. So we really want to encourage people to come down, see the remaining water that re uh, remains in the marsh. We are not wet year round. It's a seasonal marsh. So right now we do have water in the, in the vernal marsh. We'll probably have water till the end of August and then after that it will be completely dry. So not much longer will we have water. And that's because the, the aquatic birds will also be migrating. So what will people expect to see if they come out after August? Right, sure. So right towards the end of August, it's really going to start to dry. You're going to see a lot, a lot of migratory birds. Um, right now we have hundreds and hundreds of annual sunflowers and poppies blooming. Oh, and I would say in the next month they're going to start to provide food for birds and, and, and insects. So as these birds migrate through, our, our bird population might increase and it's starting to dry out and those annual flowers will start to die off and decompose. And in the fall, it becomes a little more foggy and a little cooler and we start to prepare for the rains. You're going to see a lot of management on the land. You're going to see our staff working hard to prepare for the rains. We hope for rains again yet in the mm -hmm. early winter as we did this last year and then it starts its cycle all over again. Such an amazing place and what's great about the marsh is that you have events year round and there's so many exciting events happening throughout the years. So I want our viewers to definitely know about them. Tell me a little bit about what people can expect and come out to. Yeah, so we've got a lot of great things happening at Madrona right now. Um, our staff's working really hard to provide opportunities for the entire community from children all the way to seniors. So we have some really special events happening in September. We have our grandparents senior stroll day in September. Um, these can all be found in seasons and also on our website. And then we have wildlife photography, we have turtle and tortoise day, and then of course we have make a difference day October 26. I would like to invite our community out to share and make a difference day. It's a great opportunity to get out, make a difference, help us manage this 45 acre uh, uh, beautiful preserve. As I mentioned, it's important for people to be able to thrive, but we really could not do it without our community. So we invite you guys to come out October 26th, and, and you'll be helping remove non-native plants and pick up trash, and there'll also be an educational presentation that day. And Melissa, you were mentioning to me, the marsh really depends on the volunteers. More than 5,000 volunteers work at the marsh every year. So tell me a little bit about the opportunities to give back to the marsh. Right, so you're right. We have over 5,000 volunteers a year. That's a big number, and we are incredibly grateful for that. We have over 40 permanent volunteers, and we could not function without these volunteers. Uh, we have a small staff of part-time uh, group that work on the land, and so every Saturday during the school year, we'll have anywhere from 60 to 100 uh, middle school to college students volunteering for school credit hours, and some come out just because they want to make a difference and they want to contribute to our success. But really what they're doing is they're helping us remove and manage the, uh, remove non-native plants to help us manage the preserve. And that's really important because those non-native plants compete with our native plants for resources. So food, shelter, water. And without them, we, we really could not do it. Other opportunities include animal care. We have a small collection of ambassador animals. And really those animals are um, allow people to get up close and learn about a snake or learn about a toad and why are they important and why should we protect them. And these are animals that they would see on the preserve. Also, we have front desk volunteers we're looking for right now. They greet our guests, they give tours, they help with clerical type things. And then we have docents. Docents lead hundreds of tours every year. Wow. And we have 12 to 15 current docents that do that. And we're incredibly grateful for them. We get about 2,400 school kids that come through every year. And that number is significantly increasing every year. So we're always recruiting docents. If you're interested in leading tours, we'd love to have you. And then there's many other opportunities like Propagation Society, if you like working in the nursery or um, even working on the land on Saturdays, and then data entry as well. 
Oh, it's amazing. And for many people who haven't visited the marsh, you told me there's more than 40 species of birds alone and more than 700 species of plants and animals throughout the year. That's a lot. So what can you tell people about the marsh who've never visited before? Right. I think what's exciting is I mentioned we're one of the top 100 birding spots in the country. That really says a lot about Madrona. But to have 730 species of plants and animals on a 45-acre preserve is really spectacular. It shows that we're doing something right and, and we're successful and we're going to continue to work hard to protect that preserve and increase the biodiversity. Uh, what we'd like to, people to know is to come down, take a hike. We have many free hikes uh, that we offer every weekend. We have nature walks, we have pike hikes, we have bird walks to get out, explore, remove yourself from the busy world <laughs> that we live in today and emerge yourself with nature. Um, also that the city of Torrance has so much potential you know, and everyone can have the ability to plant native plants in their backyard to include pollinators or encourage pollinators like butterflies and bees and see the benefit to them in your backyard. We do have a native garden at the Nature Center that we use as, as an example to help inspire the community to plant native. So that's also another option if you come visit the Nature Center. We can help teach you guys how to do that as well. There are so many events, as you mentioned earlier, that are coming, but you and your staff are also working on some really exciting projects um, in the new future. Is there, are there any you'd like to mention? Sure, yeah. Our staff's working really hard right now on developing our Land Steward program. It's a program that we've had in existence, but we're working on expanding that. And as our numbers increase, we had 46,000 visitors last year wow. compared to 35,000 a couple years ago. So as our numbers increase, it's important that we have land stewards out there to help protect the land, help provide people educational opportunities. So that's a program we're currently working on expanding. We work with local universities, UCLA, USC, uh, Long Beach State University on geology and water quality projects. So we're constantly working with um, to improve our understanding of the water quality, which is really important. Um, we also have many Eagle Scouts that come through, Boy Scouts doing badges, things like that. And uh, yeah, we're continuing and continuing to grow our programs and expand and make sure we're reaching all of the community and providing opportunities. So much exciting stuff happening at the Madrona Marsh. And of course, people can come to the fundraiser this Saturday and they can buy their tickets right now. Is, can they buy tickets at the door or is it just recommended to buy them in advance? It's recommended to buy, buy them in advance so they can do a proper head count because they are nonprofit. We want to make sure we can do that in advance. But yes, you're always welcome to buy tickets the day of. Um, you can also buy online, as I mentioned, at, at, on their PayPal account at their website, Friends well, of Madrona Marsh. Thank you so much, Melissa. Yeah, thank you for having me. We hope to see you guys Saturday. Have a great night. You too. And as I just mentioned, the, the fundraiser is this Saturday. It's called Walking Through Time, and tickets are $50. And you can get more information about all the great events at the Madrona Marsh at friendsofmadronamarsh.com. You also can follow their journey and updates on their Facebook page. Well, that does it for Newsbreak Live. If you ever have news or video that you'd like to share, please email us at newsbreak at torrentca.gov. Also, if you missed any portion of the show, you can catch it all on Torrent City Cable's YouTube page. Have a great night. Thank you.